Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Paddy and Pants podcast. As usual, we have Wee Judd with the other set of glasses. We have Dan, the sack man, or second-hand Dan, no, as, he don't say it. as he was nicknamed at the weekend. And we have a special guest. We have James Richards from Twisted Assisted. Um, and if you know my channel, you know that I've been promoting James's knives on the channel because they're good and his QC is good, and we get them at a really reasonable price. And they're, they're, we're buying from somebody in the UK. Okay, the knives are made in different places, but we're buying from the UK, which cuts out an awful lot of nonsense, which is why I've been following him and his progress. And hopefully it's going to be a long journey. Um, we've got some a new edition, which is going to be coming shortly-ish. I'm saying that because you just never, at the minute it is terrible trying to get companies to to get things done on time but james you're very welcome uh first time i've looked at you face to face which is nice to do and uh tell us a little bit about james richards what he does he where did you come into the knife world and why have you gone for this road which is just infinitely difficult at the minute <laughs> well first off steam thank you very much for having me um on your uh, on your show here um, and yeah, um, I guess Twisted Assisted has, has existed um, for about eight years. Um, we sort of started off on the, the Facebook knife groups. Um, I've always had a, a lifelong interest in knives. And um, we actually started off uh, throwing knives and tomahawks and whatnot. Um, and we started to import them from the States and it just evolved, it just grew from there. Um, and before you knew it, we were we were buying from buying from the States, all manner of knives, and then retailing them on our website. Then the referendum happened and uh, the, the pound tanked against the dollar and we sort of had to go, we had to shut down the website and get super streamlined and just purely exist on the Facebook groups, almost as a smouldering away as a bit of an idea. Um, and then we decided, I decided to have another go at it. Uh, and so a year ago, nearly to the day, we uh, set up our website and, um, and we collaborated with Best Tech on the Twisted Junzi. And it's just grown from there really. And it's been, fantastic it's been a fantastic journey so far the overwhelming support from the uk knife community and the edc community um as well as globally as well so yeah that's where we are at the moment we're what have we done we've we've got three boulders currently the junzi the um twisted assisted uh, traditional slip joint and now the tulip and we're working on our latest, latest project, which is the Twisted Gambler, which is our first fixed blade. That would be interesting to see. Um, how long are you expecting before that's going to hit the, the, the shop face, if you like? Well, we're doing things a little bit differently on the, the Twisted Gambler. Um, when we, when it comes to production knives, um, we're, we're talking about quantities in the thousands and that's why we get them for, for such a, a, such a reasonable price, 60 pounds for a good quality knife is because a thousand of them are being made. Um, were we getting a hundred made, then there'd be three times the price. It just wouldn't be economic. Um, so with, with the... <coughs> With the Twisted Gambler fixed blade, we're actually going to be launching a Kickstarter campaign and we're going to be funding it through that. Now, the Twisted Gambler, it has been designed by Ashley Phillips, who is my good personal friend and he's, a, he's the co-founder of Twisted Assisted. He's designed the knife. Um, all the drawings were, were sent off to Bestec and their engineers um, distilled uh, the, the prototype that we now have. 
Um, they were able to, to raise all of the CAD drawings and everything else. They've created us a prototype. Um, it's been sent to us. We've had that for a few months now. Um, and we're ready to hit the button. Everything is ready to go. Um, all we need is the um, is the the Kickstarter campaign to start, and it's going to be a short short campaign. It's going to be a thirty day campaign, uh, and hopefully at the end of that, um, we we'll, we'll just give the green light to Best Tech, and they will go into production with a ninety day turnaround. So it's literally the the gun is cocked, and you know we just need to pull the trigger. Is there anything you can tell us about the knife without giving the ball game away? <laughs> well, uh, all will be revealed very, very soon. But we, we found a bit of a, a niche in the market. I mean, the fixed blade market is just so saturated. There's every imaginable shape and size and, and everything else. So we tried to think, well, what's going to be the most usable, useful size? And so we've, we've kind of hit a sweet spot. Um, it's a smaller fixed blade. Um, it can be worn as a neck knife or you can belt carry it. It's, uh, the overall length is, uh, 165 millimeters, which isn't big. It weighs a hundred grams, but it punches way above its weight. I mean, if you what's were that, what's that in, uh, old man numbers, yeah, just, above, just over six inches. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh. Just over six inches overall. You're looking at a three inch, a three inch blade, um, and a just under four inch handle. Lovely. Um, so I'm I'm a big fan. I don't know. Are you familiar with the the Columbia River Knife and Tool? Their minimalist range. Yes. They're fantastic wee blades, aren't they? They're just they're amazing. Really but they're just they're just too small. So we've we've kind of sized up. We've 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 gone for. Uh, it's got a four mil, it's made from four mil, uh, Sandvik steel, 14, um, tw uh, 28N, um, Ooh. steel. Um, also that the, the primary bevels are flat ground. So for extra strength, um, we just want it to be a real beater of a knife. And, and so we've sort of. We've not gone down the route of, of hollow brined. Um, it's just going to be something that you can you can neck carry, you can scout carry. Um, we've spent as much time on the sheath as we have done on the knife itself. So many times I'm seeing that that these great fixed blades are, are being made and the sheaths are made as an afterthought. Yeah. Um, a barely considered afterthought and they're just, you know, Tops, tops knives, for example, are beautiful yeah. of that, which is why such there's such a flourishing aftermarket in in uh, sheath manufacture. You know, we've got so mm -hmm. many, especially in the states, custom Kydex makers. You know, that's their bread and butter is yeah. um, is production <laughs> knife manufacturers skimping on the sheath, just putting a dangler on there and and uh, calling it finished. So we've really taken our time with. With the design of the of the sheath for the for the twisted gambler, it's, it's going to be a Kydex one. We've got an incredible tech lock, a real slimline tech lock with it, um, with a quick release, uh, a quick release clip, so you can just take it off and on on your belt. Uh, and it's not as wide as the regular tech lock. You know the yeah, sort of the standard think, size. Yeah. You see yeah, them can, stuck on all kinds of knives, don't yeah, you? Yeah, they can be an, an amazingly, an incredibly yeah. obtrusive. They're just huge. Yeah. yeah, they are. They are indeed. Big blocks. <laughs> yeah, very big blocks, you know, stuck on a little a little fixed blade. So we've got a nice yeah. slimline one, um, which can just, it, there's no faff getting it on and off a belt. Um, and then we're, we're going to in, include a, uh, a ball chain necklace um, to to carry it you can wear it under a t-shirt and it's not going to be seen it's very low profile um and it's going to we're hoping that it appeals globally so not just for the uk market uh -huh. um we're hoping to to use kickstarter to kind of springboard our our global presence um we're very grateful to the to the uk knife and edc community for for getting us this far um, and, and when every, any person buys a knife, that's life-changing for me. 
uh, and for the company. Um, that support, it just literally, it just gets, that money gets rolled over and put into the next project. Um, but we've, we've kind of maxed out with what we can do with our resources. So we're going down the Kickstarter route. Um, we're hoping to, uh, to make lemonade from these lemons that we've got currently, which is the pound absolutely falling off uh, the precipice. <laughs> um, but there's a flip side to that coin. And so if we've, we've, if we've got USA customers, then they buy. can buy from us at very competitive prices. Yeah, that's true. So, and it sort of negates the postage price that you have to give them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so, yeah. It offsets so, can, I, that. can I ask, so is this is this going to be like, it sounds very interesting and very good. Is it going to be like a farm and field? Like, would I, this, to me, you were saying that this would be great for like a farm hand to use or someone like that or a scout master. From what I'm hearing, I'm hearing good good vibes and like you yeah. said, pop it around your net and then you're on the field, you're cutting a few plants or you're doing That's a bit it, of weeding yeah. in the gardening. And then you can take this thing camping. You're mm -hmm. telling me you've got a, a, a beater that just slots on, slots in the belt, easy, yeah. easy. Like, this sounds like something I would use, or if I was going to, I've got friends who've got farms and stuff, but if I was going to them, I think this would be something I'd put on my belt or put on yes. my neck. Yes. I'd say to them, like, try this out, you know, because a lot of them have these little stockmans or folding knives, and I'm just like, <laughs> why don't you try a proper, or oh, like a buck is nice, like a 110, but this sounds like a good alternative to them, like you said. I think that this could be good in that sort of working man's environment on on the outside. Absolutely, James, yeah. James, yeah. You've actually, you've actually, you've actually done something that neither of us have been able to do. Get uh, Dan enthusiastic about actually put, uh, uh, carrying a knife because he doesn't carry a knife. We've been trying to get him to put a pocket knife in his trousers for years, but oh, you've so. single-handedly you <laughs> to break that. So well done. No, but Dan, you're you're. You're 100 percent right. It's it's going to appeal to it, it. It could be a slippery slope. If you try and make a knife, it's going to appeal to everybody. You can end up pleasing nobody. Mm. Um, but what we've done is 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 we've we've looked at what an outdoorsman would want, what a handyman might want, a farmer, um, a sportsman, somebody that can you know if if if, if they're out deer stalking and they they want to process a deer or you know dress game um it's going to be capable of all of those things um james, it, i'll be honest james one of my favorite knives is this little fixed blade ah an absolutely beautiful little fixed blade it's about five and a half inches long this one and i just want it to be a wee bit longer <laughs> and so i Honestly, this is this is what I call my EDC knife. I uh, cut up I cut up food with it. I use it for opening my meal. I use it for boxes. This is just used for everything. Yeah. And I do really want one that's just about an inch bigger. Just that. Yeah. It's yeah. It's just. But I come from the bushcraft world, and I always had a little knife for doing food prep. Mm -hmm. A little knife for doing the little jobs about the camp that you just want to clip on and yeah. off. Yeah. So I mean. Having an easy detachable knife is probably the most important part of it because mm -hmm. you can just unclip it, put it down, clip it back on again. Yeah. I take it that's what you're going for. That's what we're going for. That is what we're going for. But um, you know, because we haven't gone down the sort of the hollow grind route, we 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 have gone for strength kind of over finesse. Ah. Uh, um, you know, we want to be to that. If you're out in the woods and you've got to batten through something. Or if you're one of those people that that uh, that enjoys battening at every opportunity, <laughs> um, and with and every knife possible, with, with, with every knife and and overlooking your hatchet and yeah. uh, <laughs> whatever and, and battening, we want you to be able to do that. Um, you know, you're gonna. It, it's not gonna be the knife to fillet a fish with, but you know, in a pinch, you 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 could. Um, but we've certainly gone for strength. We've certainly gone for. Um, for, for a kind of a rugged durability we want it to be we want it to be a user um because there's no draw queens no safe queens get your knives used and um if you're using your knives it means you're out in the woods and and woods time is healing time so it's all part of the lifestyle it's all part of the culture it's all good for our mental health um and it, it's just positive 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 stories 
there's too much negativity about knives and too much demonization um and so uh, i it's just I, I love being a part of this 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 positive promotion um of knives in the uk and indeed globally i'm really kicking myself that i didn't bring the prototype with me because I'd, I'd be showing you a very grainy I, picture of it right I, now hang on a second uh, james you have a prototype and you didn't bring it with you <laughs> i'm sorry but uh, we're we're ending I've, now we're ending now <laughs> I've, been, I've been staring at it all afternoon doing this promotions video i'm, I'm not sure i could stand to hold it um, Fair enough. Well, uh, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> well, but, hopefully, hopefully through the power of magic, if you actually sent Justin a picture of it, he'll yeah. actually put it up when we edit the video. As soon as we finish with, with the various promotional work that we're going to be using it for, um, I should be sending it to Stephen um to have have a proper fondle um, <laughs> he does like a fondle it is yeah. <laughs> no, I've heard, I've heard. james yeah. i should make this a little bit clearer we just we we just started as friends and this just came about in a conversation one night to do a podcast so you've got sort of three different sectors of the community but all of us buy knives ah yeah no, it's a brotherhood, isn't it? it, it yeah, it really is. is yeah, um, is. and um, you know, it, it, it's funny. It's amazing how many people sort of are are interested in knives, and um, and 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 boyhood interests are rekindled by it, aren't they? And memories of cadets or scouts or whatever. And um, but yeah, no, it's um, we're really hoping the Twisty Gambler is a, a success um and that the, the funding can be can be sourced through kickstarter um and that we can get it off the ground so um well, i will help you as much as i can possibly do that because i've an awful lot of uh, subs in america as well mm. they love your products already so yeah it's only a matter of expanding on it and as, I said, as you said with the price the way the pound's going it's going to become more and more um financially viable to get more to america yeah definitely i mean we're we are looking at, at, at getting um getting a hub set up in america at some point uh even if it is a sort of a a, a proxy hub um we, we've 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 got in talks with um blue ridge knives who are i guess they're the world's biggest um knife wholesaler very popular at the moment in america too yeah yeah, they've, they've got an amazing, amazing website. Um, 600, 650 brands. Wow. Um, and so once you go down that rabbit hole, um, <laughs> you can lose days on that site um, just looking at what they've got and, and their inventory is just incredible. But um, hopefully we can insert our products there so that we can, um, our products will be more accessible to the American market and very much so. Um, so hopefully that that will happen at some point. But if it doesn't, again, the the, the busier we get, the better rates that we're going to get through DHL and through through raw mail. Um, mm. And yeah, the busier we busier we are, then all of the shipping costs just come down. Well, here's a question you're going to hit. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? <laughs> Jeepers, it's not an interview, Paddy. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I actually try not to think about about next week. Um, There's a um, man after my own heart. <laughs> wow, five years time. The one thing I don't want to happen with Twisted Assisted is is for us to get so big that 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 our finger is no longer on the pulse. And the whole thing about Twisted Assisted is we're accessible. Um, I had two people ask me with regards to the Junzi, could, could we offer a second hand option? Well, you know, two people asking was good enough for me and, and we um, we got Bestech to make a hundred um, liners and and pocket clips that would convert the Junzi into left hand carry. And so right. people can, customers can make a difference now. Um, we would like to, you know, to, to, to get a, to, to work out of a, a, a small space, a warehouse, 
And uh, if I could get so, you know, where I'd like to see myself in five years is somebody else wrapping my bloody puzzles. That's yeah, what I would like exactly. to see myself. I'll still write the, note. Well, I'll still write the love letters in there. But um, Hang on a second. How old are your kids? Uh, I've got my eldest is 11 and my son is 10. Uh, no, no, he's not. He's eight. And then um, I've got a little three year old. Yeah, you'd still be in contravention of child labour laws, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Involved, so probably best not to. Well, you know, it's... Um, Careful, mine, mine James, not. there's bound to be at least one social worker watching this. <laughs> there is, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, um, you know, they're nimble little fingers. You know, they're, 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 they're great at, for doing paracord lanyards. And uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been known to, um, to exploit them on that on that. Jim, <laughs> The other thing, James, do you ever uh, think that you could sort of um, pull together the EDC community more by doing things like uh, getting a pen company to do pens for you or oh, yeah. um, spinners, you know, anything that there's always a craze for something. There is. There is. And, and do you know what? We're not limited by our imagination. We are limited by mm. the funds that are available. And yeah. right now we're, again, got a bit of an exclusive here but um, perhaps I shouldn't mention it, but we, we're, in, um, we're in talks with a, a certain company in, in uh, the UK um, where we're, Twisted Assisted are going to be the premier um, suppliers of uh, tritium to the EDC oh, community. So basically it's a radioactive isotope that's, that's um, trapped in a glass vial and it's perfectly safe um, as long as you don't, crunch them and eat them um and um and they, um, they fit in nicely with with the uh the edc the whole edc scene um, yeah so i mean as uh, sort of um what do you call them lanyard beads and things like that um, yeah la lanyard beads and a lot of the uh, zipper, yeah. even for zip, zip ties and things like that yeah they're, they're fantastic i mean anglers if you're an angler then then you're, you're probably already using tritium in in some form or another uh, the, the Ministry of Defence used them for um, live firing ranges, for marking out in the dark. They've got a half-life of seven years, and, and these things glow for 20 years. They don't require any other light source. It's a, it's a self-sustaining light, light source. And I um, think the keychain is definitely the keychain fob with a bit of tritium oh yeah. in it. Yeah. It's just, I could, yeah. I, I, you could sell them every day. Yeah, they're, they're they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And then we're, we're going to be putting them in knife handles. Ooh. So Junzi, Tulip, um, they're, we're going to be retrofitting them all with tritium. Um, we're going to be selling the vials, every nine different colours in so many different sizes. Um, there's a number of torches, milled titanium torches, which are actually, yeah. they've got spaces milled for all the of tritium. Um, yeah, I've seen them. They could be they could be fitted um so so we're, we're currently doing that and we're going to be putting every sort of spare penny that we can into into building our inventory so that we can offer that because right now it's slim pickings for the for the edc community to source these items mm -hmm. and so um that's that's the next thing that we've got on on the hit list to do and i would i would say that probably within two weeks you'll see the website sort of fully populated with with Fantastic. with tritium products we've got some on there now but um you will see a lot more items on there soon but yeah pens with the, the list is endless um yeah in, ter <laughs> in, ter in terms of the merchandise the merch as you call it um and before i forget uh, i just had a moment of inspiration in terms of the conversation you mentioned earlier one mm -hmm. of the next tarot cards has to be a brotherhood one Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. The beauty about these is, again, the sky's the limit for the ideas. And we've got, we're doing a, a run of 12, but that doesn't mean that we can't do another run of 12 and just keep going. You know, we've got, uh, after this you card, know, we've got the Halloween I... card, which is going to be quite fun. And um, this is, you know, when you, when you buy a tarot card from our website, you're helping three UK businesses. You're helping us, Twisted Assisted. You're helping the artist, the up and coming digital artist who's, absolute mad genius makes these uh, these cards happen and then there's a very very talented printers a local printers who uh, are benefiting so you know for two pounds fifty you're doing a lot of good with that and 
the, the cards they're not relevant to anybody but the EDC and the knife community. Yeah. It, they're, they're an in joke. They're a, they're a, you know, a wink, a nod to our brothers and sisters who are in the, in the, uh, in the same boat as us. I need to do a wee, uh, just a wee video separate on them because I do actually think they're fantastic. His they artwork look. is fantastic. Yeah. And I, 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 Stephen, I actually, you should be pushing these. <laughs> Definitely. I actually get, uh, I have Appreciate knives it. supplied from Ben Belkin. Um, I get his um, high end knives, the Jack Wolf knives. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. On the cartoonist he has. I don't know whether you've seen any of his knives, have you? Jack Wolf. Oh, yeah, yeah. But That's the cartoonist great. he has is called Sean Tiffany and he worked for Marvel. And uh, all his tubes, have, his tubes have a completely different set of artwork on them. Yeah. And they are just amazing. amazing. I, I mean, how amazing. is that? For, how's that for presentation? Uh, it's yeah, just exactly. Amazing. And a simple thing like that can make a huge difference. Yeah. It doesn't matter what price they are, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all part of the experience, you know. It's, uh -huh. it's it's a customer experience, isn't it? And things things evolve. It's it's not just about knives, is it? It's it's the whole experience, everything about it, and uh, it's just being as diverse as you can. Um, and I think the tarot cards are a good way of, of doing that. And we're going to, I've got a, a friend of mine who's really into 3D printing and he's going to 3D print us uh, a wall frame that will hold all 12 cards. Fantastic. And, and, and so I'm going to gift those free to everybody that supported the, the tarot cards from the start. Um, they're going to get one in the post free of charge just to display them all. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, just a piece of Perspex over the top, bang, and, and they're up there. Yeah, super, super idea. Show, actually, yeah. Well, look, Come on. any of you boys get any more questions for James? What's the favourite sack? My favourite sack would be a waiter because that was the first knife my dad bought me when I was about nine and uh, I took it out of the box and uh, I opened it up and I thought, wow, this knife is really, really blunt. And that's because the <laughs> old man deliberately took the edge off it. So I didn't surprise <laughs> myself. But yeah, so it would have to be a waiter. I know they're not fancy, but look, it's got a corkscrew, it's got a fixed blade and it's got uh, a box. The combo top. The combo top. What more do you need? It's a classic choice, a great cho choice. And Dan, I have to say, we have never had as quick a response as that. Yeah. No. That was, was like, like that. Straight yeah. in. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. There's a man yeah. who knows his sacks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, just quickly, I think I think I sent you a, a Wilkinson sword pipe knife and box from someone who gifted it to you. Yes. You did. That was from you, of course. Yeah, I kept your card. Yeah, that was that's a beautiful find. But no, to get an original Wilkinson sword pipe knife, it's really special. That was a that was. It doesn't get any better than that. That example. Everything was on point. Everything. Whoever gifted that to you, it was such a nice thing to do. It, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, you sort of you you meet some fantastic people in the community, and um, as long as you're willing to to get, you know, I never give to receive. It's just mm -hmm. nice. There's just pleasure in giving, um, but in doing so, it all comes back to you. It, it, everything comes back to you eventually, in karma or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful to be part of that. But do you want to know what's really nice at the minute? I think we're on the, the precipice of the knife community becoming much bigger in the UK. I mean, since I started doing this in the five years or five and a half years, I have noticed in the last six months more new people coming on my channel who are from the UK. I mean, it used to be most of my subs were all American. Mm -hmm. And now I'm up to about 50-50 American-UK. And I think it's a great time for the UK to get... To get our own companies, I keep wanting my own companies. I buy more knives off our own companies than to do anybody else now. Um, and I'm trying to promote all our own companies because oh. that's what you have to do. You just you do. You do. You so don't do it, to people say. don't get to hear. That's right. There's so much new blood um, coming into yeah. the community. You know, we're, we're coming out of 
you know, coming out of this two year lockdown and everything. And um, it's, um, am I right to do a little sort of shameless plug for uh, yeah. a knife show that's that's happening on the 16th of October? Uh, the Sharp Show? Um, the Sharp Show, indeed, organized um, by Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Parkinson. And um, that has really, it's been really pleasing to see how much that has snowballed to me. And it's been uh -huh. really positive watching the Sharp Show go from strength to strength. I think they've got something like 35 or 40 exhibitors now. They're maxed out on the exhibitors and um, they're selling tickets fast. And so that is gonna be an amazing opportunity to put put names to faces and and to, to mingle and to just share our passion and everything. So um, if you can get to it, you know, get to it. It's, it's on Instagram. There's a Facebook page, Sharp Show. Yeah. I did, guys. I, I did mention the Sharp Show to you about a month ago, but as always, you didn't listen to me. You were just like, "What's that? What does he want?" Yeah. I did put it on the group, but this this looks quite cool. And then you were just both like, "Oh, no thanks." No, 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 no. We did pay to stop. Dry your eyes, Dan. We did <laughs> because I immediately went and and looked it up. And more to the point, it was funny. You mentioned it first. And now every other beggar in the world has started. I know Congi is going to it. Mike's knives are going to it. Oh, yeah. James, you're going to it. So, and there, and and is Ashley going? And Patty or I, I probably, but I don't know. Mike's I didn't knives. Mention. I don't, Mike's knives have been involved in big shows over there for years upon mm -hmm. years. Been dealing with Michael for oh, must be about four years now. I buying stuff from him. Yeah. Really nice fella too to speak to. Mm. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to put faces to them. And if the three of us can get our act together next year and make it a, you know, maybe a weekend or whatever the shows are on. Yeah, no, that'd be good. If you guys can come down next year, that would be, we'll have a meet That'd be really good, yeah. That'd be def oh, definitely on. something worth putting in the books, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah. So anyway, in terms of other questions, I have had a question that I've been sitting on since the very beginning, since we actually oh, yeah. on this, okay? Now, James, what were you cooking the other day? <laughs> the steak, the coriander, the sea salt, and the cider vinegar, or uh, vinegar. I racked my brain, but I could not figure out what it was. So what was it, you beggar? Well, um, being, being... Sorry, guys, this 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 was on Instagram. It was the last yeah, yeah. post he did. Uh, oh, did right, you try? Yeah. I did, uh, yeah, I... Um... Yeah, posted a sort of a teaser pic of uh, some ingredients, and uh, I was making um, authentic South African biltong. Oh, so have you ever so mentioned biltong? I, got it right? Yeah, and it, it's so it's effectively, it's um, I'm not cooking anything. I'm just I'm just drying it, and it's yeah. I'll tell you what, guys, it's the most boring thing in the world <laughs> to watch meat dry. It's more boring than paint drying, and because you you want to eat it as well, so. Uh, <laughs> But no, it's if you like jerky, if you like cured meats, um, then South African biltong. I'm part South African myself. I've got lots of family in South Africa. My wife's father lives over in South Africa, so um, and every time we go over there, I, I stock up on it. But uh, so I, I uh, yeah, learned how to make it, and uh, yeah, I've got a biltong box. Anybody can build one. You just look on YouTube. It's really easy to do. But the, the Coriander seeds are, are the important seasoning, and it's very, very different from jerky. Not to be confused with jerky. If it, there, there's some amazing, amazing South African knife makers, um, yeah. and the talent there is just incredible. Yeah, I've actually got a couple of South African knives now from custom makers. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favourite knives. Now I'll have to say. Oh, that's stunning. It's a little snub nose, but it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Really lovely knife. But I've got a couple of them. Okay, That's well, in, in the spirit of all things South African, how about I send you some biltong each? Oh, you you're a man. See, you're... You can see if you, you'll like it. You'll get, um, as long as a sniffer dog doesn't eat it, in a, in a, in a raw mail warehouse somewhere. Well, <laughs> just, just, just be aware that saying that the Northern Ireland is, uh, you, you can fall far, far to the agricultural policy over here. It's oh, right. Different. So, yeah. That just means I'll just, just send, 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 it to, send, it, send it to Paddy and if it re, he'll share it out. 
Who am I? Okay. Yeah, I've never seen yeah. any, but send it to me. <laughs> yeah. You I know, Dan. Mom. I know, Dan. What a what a ch- schoolboy sc- error right there. <laughs> I have the belly that will keep it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, can, I, can I ask you a few questions about the, the previous twist of decisive knives, please? Yeah, sure. Um, James. Uh, so I, I ha- I've had the Jonesy, um, and yeah, that, that blew me away, mate, because it was just like, Everything about it was just like it was on the limits. It was well made. It, mm-hmm. it was a big knife, but it was small. Um, it was it was just I just and the the little skull on it. I think that was perfect. It was um, just everything about it. The fact you could just take the hand, the scales off, replace mm-hmm. with different ones, which gave it some sort of custom. It gave the, the 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 user that sort of option to have a different instead of having to like you know boil up the old uh, bit of dye, put, put yeah. drop the scales yeah. in. It gave him gave the option of a proper factory finish. Here's the Jonesy, and here's the kit that can go with it. You can get this, you can get that, and it's a very versatile knife for a lot of things. It, although it is an EDC, and I liked the fact that it, it was a slip joint, but it wasn't. It had that sort of click to it, yeah, and that was yeah. like that was a bit sexy and a bit different and a bit a bit a, a bit naughty. And I was just like, this is nice, yeah, um, yeah. lovely. And I did. I didn't have. I, I must admit, I did pass it on. But I did. I did. I did give that some serious bit of stick when I had it. And I thought, yeah, very well known by a very well known maker. You put a beautiful little touch on it. And the, for what you got, the D two and the scales are handled. The price was, like you said, unbelievable. Now try and get a knife with D two with all mm-hmm. all them options for customization with from a good dealer with a good warranty, someone that you can get hold of, and so on and so forth. For that price, for for what was sixty pounds? Isn't it basic? No, basic yeah. pounds. Sixty pounds, something like 60 that. Sixty pounds, yeah. Sixty and, pounds, and you, you you can't whack it. It's sixty quid. What else can you get? And then I just see the new one, the tulip. Tulip, yeah. Tu- the tulip is it tulip? The tulip, yeah. Tulip. That I again, I haven't seen that yet, but that that looks wicked, and I'm sure that will be super super loads of scales for it and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a it, cute little. Like, oh, not a budding knife, is it? But you know what I mean? It's a cute yeah. little knife you can it put in your small, pocket. I mean, I was really on the fence about the tulip. Um, when, when it was put forward, when we thought about it, I, I'm i not a small knife guy. I, I um, And it had me umming and ahhing. And, and, and so we, we went ahead and we bought the premium M390 titanium one. And I played with it for about half an hour. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, it's, I call it, it's the small knife for people that don't do small knives. Um, for people who like to fidget with their knife, it's very fidgetable. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, and, and we've taken the same ethos with the with the Junzi and with regards to customization. Um, and it's so fast to strip. You know, you can have, you've got two bolts to undo and it's in pieces, both T8. You know, seconds. It takes you seconds to swap out the scales. It's even easier than than the Junzi, and the Junzi is not the easiest knife to strip. Um, I I, yeah. I think I think as a slip joint, the Junzi is pretty easy to strip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slip joints, is, slip yeah. joints can well, we, be really awkward. <laughs> yeah, I'm novel. sure. I'm sure. It's um, obviously from from my perspective as as the person that carries the can when it when somebody strips a knife and it goes wrong um you know we've you know we've sent out people who've stripped out screws we've sent them new screws people who've damaged the threads on the back springs we've sent out new back springs so we've looked after everybody like that and um so what was nice about the tulip was it's 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 just so there's no back spring tension whatsoever it's double detent um it's just fast it's a fast little knife that you can you can swap it out and the message that we're sending out is <clears throat> that just because it's a production knife doesn't mean you can't have some level of customization you make that knife yours um and and you you can do it for eight quid you can do it for nine quid you don't have to be fancy or you can go fancy you can go titanium and just you know and spend 120 quid including the knife okay but that's still good money for if you think about what you're getting for it. But it's still their choice, isn't it? It's your choice. Yeah, it's, you it's, it's your choice. It's a basic yeah. knife. Make it yours. Yeah, absolutely. And you can have like if you've got two sets of scales, you can have a different front and a different back. 
play it's jazz, ready. man. Just have fun yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice jazz. That's good. Do whatever the hell. new thing. Nice <laughs> jazz. I love it. Yes, definitely. But uh, yeah, the the Junzi, it's I'm really pleased it's been a success, and and but it is a hard knife to follow. You, you if you have such a successful first knife, I, I suppose. Singers might say the same thing. If you have a, a top ten hit, and then you've you've got to follow that up with something even better, haven't you? So we we, you know, we we didn't try and compete with the Junzi. We went right. Well, let's just do a traditional, and so we've we've done that. And now the Tulip is something completely different as well. Um, and it was also a real buzz to to. I, I'm a, a lifelong admirer of, of Ostap Hell, who is the designer who designed the Tulip. Uh, Ostap is Polish. And I mean, his designs are just sublime, really, really, really sexy knives that he comes out with. And, and, and just his ethos is carried, rolled out through all of his knives. You can see what he's doing with each one. And it's, everything is minimalist. It's deceptive how simple they are. This, this it's simple yet complicated. And two, two bolts, it's undone. With one T, you know, without having to swap out your, 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 your Torx bit, it's, it's in pieces. Um, so from a maintenance perspective, that's good. And just everything is on point. I've had a lot of people say, oh, are you going to do like an extra large tulip? Yeah, you know what? Let's, we could make an extra large one. That could happen in the future. Um, uh, uh, tell, tell me this. Have you ever tried Tucson? Uh, approach Tucson, them? Approach them, yeah. Have you approached them? Uh... I haven't approached them. I, again, it's... You know, I've admired their products. I've owned one of the, several of their products in the past. Um, their and, uh, joints are fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they're great. You know, once you know, there's there's no beating the Chinese when when they when they get their factory set up right and they get their QC set up right. They, there's there's no beating them. I remember I remember going to the the 2016 Blade Show in Atlanta and seeing We Knife <laughs> for the first time. And buying one and talking to them and 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 bringing it back and then you know within a few weeks we were importing them into the UK we were the the sole UK importers of Wee Knife, um, and just blown away with with the quality and, and the, the actual the fit and finish was just amazing absolutely amazing. They did did they do the banter, Wee Knife? I believe that is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so, yeah. so that's the baby banter so that's a Civivi but. But the band yeah. was a wee now for it. So V V is we. It's oh, just really? yeah, the budget version. But, they did uh, the, they did the scamp, didn't they? I they that, did. That just like that was oh my god, that was just yeah. phenomenal. They're outstanding. And I mean you look at this that scamp, you can actually see they've laser etched it, um, the, the blade steel on it, S thirty five VN, they they've mm. etched it in there, but they've etched it so small that you actually I've got pretty good eyesight and, and I, I couldn't see it with, with the naked eye, you know, the level of the kit that they've got over there, yeah. to, you know, to get those tight yeah. tolerances. Um, you know, if, if the factory have got the right kit and they've got the right setup, then it, it's a, there's nothing that they can't do. But what they can't do is, is come up with the original designs. Not really, yeah. not, not on, that's why they, they, they buy in all this talent. Um, particularly from Eastern Europe. Yeah, they, they bring in a lot of the designers. Um, and in fact, they're crying out for designers. And it was just a shame. We would have liked to have continued doing Wee Knives and selling them. But what they were doing was that they were, they were bringing out a, a two knives a month. And yeah, so we were, we were ordering, you know, 10 of each. But then they started doing, doing them in 10 colors, 10 different anodized titanium so then you've got to keep up doing <laughs> whatever ones i bought people wanted oh i wanted the purple one <laughs> i've only got the yellow the green and the thing and I, i'm sat on these and then you know they brought out the next two knives and you know those knives those other knives they're, they're last month's news they're old you know i'm sat yeah. i just couldn't keep up with them i was like you know what i'm out <laughs> i'm yeah, doing my own I, thing now i'm really surprised somebody in the uk hasn't got in touch with uh, to some because yeah. they make so many different slip joints they would be the ideal ones to import them but nobody really sells them here yeah. i haven't found anybody no. that sells them do they and i mean I they, their slip joints would go a treat here but anybody can do that anybody can yeah. do that anybody can send to some how do you think i i i started off 
you send some yeah you, you you find out who you talk to over there and you send them an email and they are only too happy to speak to you yeah because it's business yeah and and anybody can do it you don't even have to be a business because um, i've troubled in a youtube channel never mind a business <laughs> <laughs> I'll just back you up on something you said earlier. You said that the American dollar used to be, well, the pound used to be strong against the dollar. When yeah. I first started bringing American knives over, I said, I've always been second hand, it was up one four, one five. Now it's like, ha. Oh. Yeah. Right now, it's oh, the other week, I almost thought, is this worth it? Oh my God, it's I don't, so I don't, hard. It's, I, I, I don't know how you're doing it down at the moment because. Um, when I started doing it, probably in about 2014, 2015, importing, it was 1.8. I was getting 1.8. Oh my God. And that, that was, but do you know what? The human mind is a funny thing because that becomes the norm. You know, it's, it's like being given a load of overtime at work and you're given overtime. It, the option is there to do overtime and you just take it for granted. And then the, the rug's pulled out from under your feet and you suddenly realize that you've yeah. just been taking it for granted. So, I um, mean, Geez, you know, we're, we're having to be really canny at the moment to, to turn a shilling. We really are. Um, funny enough, I'm always buying from the States, I, um, when the Brexit thing happened, that didn't affect us at all because we never bought from Europe to begin with. So it was sort of nice dodging that bullet, but um, now we're reaping the, <laughs> the grief against, you know, of the, of, the dollar, of the pound tanking against the dollar. But hey-ho. Yeah. It's, it's a passion, yeah. isn't it? It's a passion. Yeah, it really it has is. To be. I'd rather be happy than rich, and that's I'm happy doing this. It's hard work, but it's it's satisfying, and it's and it's yeah, really well, worthwhile. It's definitely paying off for mm. people like us. So you're grateful, James. Just keep it coming. So we've got yeah, we've got, we've got the new knife. Have you got a name for the new knife? New knife, by the way, the fixed blade. Yeah, it's the uh, the twisted gambler is what we're going with. That's what it was. Yes. Twisted Gambler. So um, actually, Phillips, the designer, was um, he's a bit weird. He he got inspired by Kenny Rogers, and probably Matthew Sherbert. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was the Gambler. Um, you got to so, know I'm, when to hold them. You know, you got yeah, to know exactly. when to hold them. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck folding this one. That's all right. <laughs> That's true. But, um, yeah. So set. Hopefully, I, we're we're hoping for an, for the for the imminent Kickstarter um campaign to start as soon as we could just dot the i's and cross the t's and um yeah just watch this space because it well be make sure you let me know if you can a couple of days before it starts and i can give you yeah, a few we'll days of, yeah i'll Thank get that you, out there as much as i can mm. james it's been really lovely to put a face to the name I've yeah thoroughly well, enjoyed thank you so much chat. for having me it's it's uh -huh. been a blast um you know it's a lonely old thing working from home yeah. <laughs> not really seeing people and um it's been lovely talking to other human beings that isn't the postman or the dhl man and um no thank you very much for having me on uh, james before you before the release of your knife you can come back on for maybe a yeah. 15 20 minute and you can talk over your knife and yeah i'd love it, to you know, where the design came from it would be a nice yeah. little 15 minute video to put up yeah definitely no i'd love to do that a pleasure thank you so much and no. to dan to Justin or we Judd. Um, I'll see you through the week. <laughs>